But if there's anything you think Tim Burton would be able to outdo, it's the visual style. I mean, this is the guy who said, hey, you know what that guy needs? Fucking scissors on his hands. That'll make the movie work. But is it enough to save this reimagining? Let's take a look at visual style. This one really is like apples and oranges because they both have very distinct looks. The look of the Wonka movie has sort of a timeless feel, almost like it could take place anywhere. But to be fair, the Charlie version does too. Britain really knows how to take our modern day world and make it look like something out of a fairy tale. The cinematography and sets are just so exaggerated they're absolutely perfect. But in a sense, that's also a problem with the film. The first half is so cleverly set up and visually clever that it actually kind of loses its edge when it goes inside the factory. There's a few too many things going on, it's a little too dark to make everything out. In Wonka's version, you could see everything fine, and the strangeness was a great contrast to the typical everyday world we saw in the first half. But the Wonka version has problems, too. The film does have sort of a 70s tint to the whole thing, and on top of that, the effects were good at the time, but are now a tad outdated. That chocolate river looks more like liquid feces. It always looked like colored water, and it still does. It's polluted. It's chocolate. No, it's not. The Charlie version looked a lot more like chocolate. I mean, it really looks like you could eat that stuff. Then they did actually get the proper design of what a gobstopper looks like. I mean, what the fuck are those? Can't you see? It makes everlasting gobstoppers. No, that's a radioactive paperweight. I'm not sure what you smoke to see gobstopper. In the Charlie version, the factory never did look quite right, but at least it did look more like a factory, particularly in the opening credits. A close call, but I am gonna go with the Charlie version. They just had more money, more time, and a visionary nutball to make it all look good. Point goes to the Charlie version. He's absolutely bonkers! <laughs> But again, it all comes down to story. Which one tells their tale the best? Well, let's not wait any longer and dive right in. While both versions seriously deviate from the book, I give credit that they both create their own vision of what they're trying to say. As I said before, the Wonka version is more focused on the Charlie character, and the Charlie movie is ironically more focused on the Wonka character. Isn't that strange? And I have to be honest, I went into the Charlie version expecting to hate it. But when it started, I didn't find it that bad. It seemed creative and felt like it was trying to start its own unique version that actually kind of worked. That is, again, until Depp showed up. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, the Charlie version is almost banking on the fact that you saw the other version. The scene where Grandpa Joe walks is almost glanced over, and like I said before, Charlie is so underdeveloped you could pretty much just run the movie without it. He's pretty much a footnote next to Wonka. The film also shows a lot more, like I never really wanted to see Loompa Land. I had my own vision of what a vernicious canid looked like, and it did not look like that thing. <laughs> In fact, I still had my kindergarten drawing of what I thought one originally looked like. I had issues. It also bothered me how we don't know if the kids survived in the Wonka version, yet we clearly see them survive in the Charlie version. I think the message sticks much more to kids when you don't know if they survive, but there's still that possible out that they did. There's also no Slugworth, but that wasn't really in the book anyway. And there's also no outburst at the end, which seemed to really put Charlie's innocence and kindness to the test. Now granted though, the Charlie version did update a lot of plot holes. Like why shrink down a giant piece of chocolate that could make like 50 bars into one? In this version, they actually say they want to teleport it through television, which is a lot more clever. They also explain that Wonka is looking for children to win the golden tickets, not adults. I mean, how did he know in the other version that coincidentally five children and not five adults would find the tickets? I'm a trifle deaf in this year. Speak a little louder next time. But what really gets me are the morals. That's probably the weirdest part. The moral of the Wonka version is just always be good and true to yourself and one day you'll get your reward. Simple enough. The moral of the Charlie version, I guess, is to always be a kid at heart, but be an adult in your mind. Don't spend your adult life being a little child. But that's more of a message for grown-ups, isn't it? You know, and unsuccessful comedians. But like I said before, the number one problem with the Charlie version is that it was about Wonka. And it shouldn't be. Charlie is the focus and the character kids can identify with. Wonka is more like Merlin or Mr. Miyagi. He's interesting, but he's not the heart of the story. That has to belong to the main character, which is Charlie. His name is in the title of the book for crying out loud! Though I don't hate it as much as I did in the past, it's clear which one's the superior version. 
the Wonka version. Uh, it's Wonka version. The old, the original, the timeless classic. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> no way. Oompa, oompa, doompa dee dee. If you are wise, you'll listen to me. So the old wins this time around. As a special treat, here's the original music from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory to play us out. Willy Wonka, Willy Wonka, no. the amazing no. chocolate no. No. Oh, play something else! <laughs> Enough is enough. This is the final 